Hello everybody, this is Linda. Welcome to Lenny P's Place. Today I'm here with a de-stash of some uh, paper ephemera that I have. Um, and I have three packs that I'm selling. Each one has the exact same thing in it, so I'm going to show you one and uh, try to get all this out without making too much noise. I know some of you do not like to hear the paper. Um, let's see if I can get this out. There we go. Okay, so it's just random things that I have had in my stash for a while, and some of you know that I'm trying to um, reduce the amount of stuff that I have in my stash. So I'm going to be coming on um, as I go through things. I'm going to be coming on to see if anyone might be interested in having any of it before I take it to the thrift store where most of it probably came from. <laughs> anyway, I have these um, paper rulers. So there's one of those. And they go to 12 inches. Let's see. It also has centimeters on it. <clears throat> and then there'll be two of these. And I think, I'm not sure what these are. They're maybe centimeters. They're not inches. I think they're centimeters. And it's not orange. It's red. I don't know. My computer never shows red like it's supposed to. Then there's a little bag here with some cigar bands, and all these will be different. My, my late husband and my son and my son-in-law, when they would get together, they would sit and have a cigar, and they always had different kinds. So there's lots that I have all kinds of labels. Now... <clears throat> They won't be the same in each package. I just picked out, did I do five or six? One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I did seven. There's seven in this one anyway. I think I did. I guess I did seven. So there's that. Then um, here's some guest checks. And for you that are just maybe starting out with your journaling, this is a good way to to get a few things without having to go out and buy big packages. I went out and bought big packages and now I have more than I'll ever use. So you get five green ones and you get five pink ones. The green ones are thicker than the pink ones. Their paper is heavier. Just thought I'd let you know that. Then I have um, some playing cards show you those if I can get the little bag open. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, hope you're staying cool. It's very hot. Um, and thank you. I'm happy that you stopped by today. So these are, maybe I should come down a little so you can see the pictures better. So that, that way I don't have to keep holding stuff up. There we go. I'll move it out when I need to. <clears throat> so, excuse me. <clears throat> These, <clears throat> excuse me. Need a drink and I didn't bring one. Um, These are photographs of, uh, or they're images of photographs that people have taken, photographers have taken at different uh, scenic areas of our country. This is called Golden Spike and this is at National Historic uh, National Historic Site. Doesn't say where it is, but it's the photographer is Phil Gamel. So you get that one. And then this is Carlsbad Caverns National Park. So I'm gonna assume maybe this is Arizona. Isn't that where Carlsbad is? I think it's Arizona. Maybe wrong. 
And the photographer is Jack Olson and Russ Finley. Two of them worked on that picture. And then it just, on the front, it just says, America's National Parks. Okay, this stuff's in the National Parks. And then here's some little flashcards. Two subtraction and two addition. And then you get this color on the back. It's not shut. It's the sh the. Uh, it's not showing up very well, but it's really a. It's a green, kind of an army green. On my camera, on my, and this is blue, and neither one of the colors are showing up very well for some reason. I don't know why. Um. Well, I did give you two. Guess I gave you two more of these. <laughs> this is the Statue of Liberty. And this is Mesa Verde National Park. So there you go. Got four of those. Um, then these are flinch cards. These are a newer version. These are an older version of flinch cards. And somewhere, I can't find them. They've gone into that deep dark hole in here. I have even older flinch cards. I was going to put some in, but I can't find them. And you know what else I can't find? I have a 1939 original Sears catalog, and I cannot find that anywhere. I don't know what happened to it. It's got to be here somewhere, but I can't find it. But anyway, that's a different thing. Okay, and here's some, um, some more cards. Here's some that I they they actually came from I think they came from Walgreens I bought oh well, quite a few years ago probably eight or nine years ago and they already look aged so there's some of those and then these are minor alumni association I guess this was a group and they must probably had some type of meeting and they handed out these cards. So there's those. And then these are more uh, cards with, these are paintings. This one's by, it's called Billiards and it's by George Brock. It's courtesy of the National Art Museum in Paris. So there's that picture. And then this one is a Van Gogh picture and it's called Houses at Overs or something like that. I don't know what it says. And it's from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. So there are the cards that you get. And and here's some more cards. Um, if I can get them out. <laughs> So these are, these is, they came from some kind of a um, song about music, songs, it's some kind of a, a game, they came from a game. It says the song 16 tons refers to what dark and dirty occupation, and the answer is coal mining. And then they have, there's another one on the back. And then here's one. So, hum the theme song to Bonanza. So if you're playing that game, they want you to hum that. These are, an, this is a different uh, card game. And this is, is um, also songs. I don't know. Maybe it's the same card game. I don't think so. I think it's different. Anyway, maybe it's the same. So this is a song by Bobby Darin, Dream Lover, 
and you're supposed to, I guess if you were playing it, you would have to give the answer to the first line. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know how you play it because I didn't even try to figure it out. Then here's Blue Suede Shoes and Natural Woman. So you get those. This is another card game, and this is uh, Brain Elixir. So you get Ask a Question. And this is a, it's more like, I think, well, that one's like a chemistry question. This is, there are ten birds perched on a fence. A farmer aims his rifle and shoots one. How many are left? You know that? Do you know how many are left? One. The other bird's startled <laughs> and fly away. <laughs> so there you go. These are just some big cards, the war cards. They're good to cover up and make tags out of anyway. And let's see, what are these? Sydney Opera House and Eiffel Tower in France. Okay, these are just pictures of places. Sorry, got out of frame on that. And then... These are postcards, and it's from, um, what is it, um, Penguin, Penguin, okay, uh, it's the, I guess it's the, what do you call it, publisher, the Penguin Company, and these are the books that they published, you get, uh, the, this is a Perry Mason, Case of the Dangerous Dowager, Dowager, I don't know how you say that, I don't know, there you go, I don't know how you say it, Earl Stanley Gardner, because he wrote all of the Perry Mason stories, I love to watch Perry Mason, I know he's, it's, they're old, 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 I don't like the new, the new version that came out, um, probably, what, 20 years ago, I like the old ones from the 50s, or early 60s, and this is Robert Burns, the Penguin Poets is, Poets is the name of that. Anyway, took me a while to get that out, didn't it? I'm going to come back out a little because if I don't, I'm just going to keep getting out, out, of fo uh, out of frame. Okay, I don't remember what's in here, so we'll see what's in this little bag. Oh, it's just more bags. So you get a bag with another bag. And then one of these, that silverware comes in. I think that's all that's in there. And then this big... Pocket, tag, pocket, I guess. It says timeless, having, begin, having no beginning or end. I like the, uh, the paper. And I think this might be from Seven Gypsies long ago, eight or nine or ten years ago at least. Just hold on to this stuff and never get rid of it. And just piles up and piles up. These are some vintage um, stationary papers with envelopes. And I've collected these along the last probably 10 years or so. I've been collecting these boxes of stationery. So... I'm including some of those. And this is like a parchment paper. It just has this pretty little flower on it. Let's see what this one is. Oh yeah, this is like a watercolor paper. I think it's really pretty. I guess it goes this way. I 
Oh, and before I forget, each one of the packs will have one of these um, envelopes in it, but they won't be the same. There are three different ones. And then there's this it's a little note card, and it's, uh, it's like a vellum. Can't see through it. You got two of those, and then some mini CD envelopes, and then let me figure this out, what this is. Just envelopes, I guess, just like brown envelopes. Yeah, I think I had a whole box of these. So you get five of those. I think there's five. Or is there four? One, two, three, four, five. Five of those. Then one of these, years ago, they used to put your photos in these when you go pick them up at the drugstore. So there's one of those. And then there's this. And I'm not sure what these are for. They go all the way through, but you could fold them, use them as in your journal as pockets, take them apart, I don't know, close up one end, and then this goes with it. And just a card and, I mean, a I guess they might, I don't know, some kind of invitations, I suppose. I've used it before, and I put picture in here. So there's that. Then there's one of these um, envelopes that came out of some kind of package that I found, some kind of book I found. And then there's uh, these little envelopes, and there's five of those, little tiny ones, don't have anything in them. Um, then there's these envelopes that's name, class, and amount. They must have gave these out to some kids that were selling something at school, is what I kind of think. So there's those, and then some coin envelopes. Five of those. And then there's two of these with the long skinny window in it. And then there's one of these, and I think this is maybe parchment paper. I'm not sure. It has a pretty scalloped closure on it. And then let's see, here's some more bigger envelopes, which are good to fold over and use in your journals, or use as a cover to make a journal. There's two. One is a little bit bigger than the other one. Then you get two of these um, time cards. And two of these big tag repair uh, repair tags, and you can, this is perforated, so you can fold that up or take it off and use it for something else. I like the numbers on them. And then let's see. Here are some, I think you can see them. These are from Japan. And this is Hong Kong by night. Guess it goes maybe that way. And this is the sh some kind of imperial villa. I don't know if you can see those or not. Maybe you can. So you get two of those and then some coin envelopes. I mean coin, not envelopes. 
um, holders. You just, you know, fold them down and glue them. They're good for putting little pictures in, stuff like that, and then closing them up. Or you can take them apart and just use one, like, for a picture. Like, put that lady's face in there, and then close it up. Um, and then here's two more, and these are bigger ones. And I think there's five of these smaller ones. Two, three, four, five, yeah, and two big ones. And then there's some different types of these um, slide holders. These are, these have a, I think that peels. I haven't used any of this stuff in so long. I think that's a, let's see, does that peel off? I don't know. If it doesn't peel off, you glue it. <laughs> anyway, there's five of those. And then there's, these are plastic ones. So you get some of these. They have a strip on them that is glue, but once you open them up, you kind of have to add some glue to them, and you get five of those. And let's see, I've got a few more things here. This is from the State Department of Antiques and History in Raleigh. For those of you who don't know, I live in North Carolina. Um, these are like quotes, and they're their own. Um, I guess they might have been in some type of a book or something, and somebody has made a little square on each one of them. The only conquest which are permanent and leave no regret are our conquest over ourselves. Napoleon said that. So each one has like a quote of some sort on it. I walked a mile with pleasure. She chattered all the way, but left me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow. In narrow words says she, but over the things I learned from her when sorrow walked with me. Well, that's kind of depressing, isn't it? Hope is never a substitute to clear thinking and hard work. So some, some things are not... Um, some things are, are not, doesn't have who set them on them or whatever. The highest reward for man's toil, toil, is not what he gets for it, but what he becomes by it. John Ruskin said that. Okay. And then you get a couple of index cards, blank ones, and some, this is the tomb decks card. They're vintage. This one's from 1957, and it's Your Love is My Love. It tells about it on, the, on this side, and then on this side you get some, you get the words and the music. And then here's some of the Dewey Decimal cards from the library. This one is uh, Frontier and Pioneer Life by Laura Ingalls Wilder. This one, when Marcia goes to church, this is Doris Monroe. The Tale of the White-Faced Hornet, Henry Kane. So, get those. And then two really big, is there two? No, there's five of them, or four. Nope, there's five of these big, uh, flash cards. Forgot what they were. <laughs> Didn't think about it. Um, and then there's some stationery that came out of one of the books where you just tear it out at the top. So there's the bluebirds, the, some kind of red birds. And some kind of 
orange and brown birds. I don't know why they are. So. And let's see what else. There's a few more things here. Oh, and this is some, some type of textured paper. I don't know if I would consider it embossed, although you can feel it on one side. On the other side, this is the back side, I think. I really don't know. I guess you could use either side. This side's kind of shiny. So, there's that. And then there's some sort of pearl, a pearl color. One of those. And then there's this green, kind of like a linen paper, feels like. Two of those. And this page. Got little speckles in it. Okay. And then there's two of these trifold time cards. You can do a lot of stuff with those. So that is, no, wait, I got one more thing. As a bonus, I'm including some of my rag paper. And if you really like it and you'd like more, I do have it. But uh, it's not all rag paper. Part of it is. I'll show you. Okay, let's do this first. Because there are some other things in here that are old. Like uh, here is ledger paper that has been written on as a, I really can't say, can't really read it, don't know the date. Been a while, a while. It's been around a while, but I don't know for how long. And I, it has something to do with national parks, I think. They use the ledger to write about national parks. Then there's um, Southern Weighing and Inspection Bureau. Here's a piece of out of that book, and it is from 1949. And it's very thin, like onion skin kind of paper. And here is... I guess a billhead, that's what I call it. Um, it's from 1931, and I don't know what it's for. Investment securities. I don't know. Anyway, there's this, and Nothing on the back. Paper's not real thick either on that one. And then there's this from 1946. Let me see it. Something about a train. It's got something to do with a train. But I don't know what. Sometimes you just buy this stuff and you really don't know what it is, what it's for. Now this paper is, uh, it has really pretty handwriting. Um, it's from 1885. July 23rd, 85. This might be the one that's really brittle. Yeah, this one will... If you bend it, it's going to come apart. So there's really not too much you can do with it unless you want to back it on something because it's not going to, it's not going to stay together very well if you don't back it. It's going to fall apart. Um, and then this is from 1880. This one's not as brittle as that one. Not as pretty writing either. Charles Mitchell, Dr. Charles Mitchell. Okay, this was a, I guess, a doctor. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but it's on there. So, I'm including these. 
papers. And this is the rag paper here. This is a big sheet, big piece. You will get you'll get two at least two pages out of this if you wanted to cut it and put it in your journal. Maybe even yeah, you get two. So there's and and the good part is that a lot of it doesn't have any writing on it. So you can do whatever you want with it. Of course, you can do whatever you want with it anyway, but you know what I mean. And then this side has more writing than the other side. So, And it's from 18, 1841, it says here. Then on this side, it's 1862. So... I don't know how old it is, but it's in from the 1800s. Um, and I know that it's, the book was done in the 1800s because after about 1850, they quit uh, using rag paper. They went to um, pulp paper from trees. And um, I think I forgot to say, but this is French. So, you get that. All these are French. Here's another little piece of French rag paper. And here's one. I love these little cute little pages. Oh, you got two of those. Give you two. I don't know if there's two in all of them, because I thought I only gave you one, but you got two. Okay, so there's that. And so that's the whole pack. That's it. And um, because I've put these, this in, because these, these pages are expensive, but I'm going to um, ask $20 for the set, the bundle. And that'll include your shipping. So... Okay, I'll put it back together in a minute. First, let me tell you about it. Okay, so it's $20 a bundle shipped. And I will leave my email address in the description box below. If you want to set and you email me, please give me your information, your um, name, mailing address, and your PayPal information. So, yeah. And then after I send you an invoice, you will have two hours to pay. Now, I've explained this before, but in case you haven't been here, um, I used to, would wait. And I'd have people waiting. And um, I'd be waiting on somebody to pay, and I'd say, well, if they don't pay, then I'll... I'll uh, I'll email you back and let you know. And I would wait a day or two for somebody to pay, which is a long time to wait. And then they never would pay. And then I would email whoever was in line next. And then they'd say, well, I don't think I want it anymore, which I don't blame them. If you have to wait three days to find out if you can have something, well, I wouldn't wait either. So, anyway, that's my reason. If, uh, if you're interested and you want one, you will have to pay within two hours or I will go to the next person. And um, I think that's fair all the way around for everybody. So, uh, thank you for stopping by and checking out this paper pack that I have for sale. And um, I only have three. So... That's it. I only made three. So I will um, talk to you later. Thanks again for stopping by. Please be safe, be happy, be well, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.